the first story, The Doll in the Attic. In a quiet town nestled deep within the shadows of ancient forests, there stood a dilapidated mansion known as the Thornwood Estate. The mansion had long been abandoned, shrouded in rumors of dark events that had transpired within its walls. One particular legend, whispered among the locals in hushed tones, spoke of a cursed doll named Serafina. Serafina was no ordinary doll. Crafted with intricate detail, her porcelain skin was flawless, her glassy eyes held an eerie depth, and her delicate lips curled into a permanent unsettling smile. She had been a prized possession of the Thornwood family, who were said to have possessed a fascination with the occult and the supernatural. The tale of Serafina began to unfold on a moonless night, when a bolt of lightning struck the mansion's towering oak tree, splintering it in two. The very same night, a group of adventurous teenagers, drawn by the mansion's mysterious allure, dared each other to spend the night within its forsaken walls. Unbeknownst to them, Serafina lay hidden within a dusty attic, her lifeless eyes fixed on their every move. As the clock struck midnight, a low, mournful wail echoed through the mansion's halls. The wind howled outside, carrying whispers of a long-forgotten incantation. Up in the attic, Serafina's glassy eyes blinked and her fingers twitched ever so slightly. The threads of an ancient spell, interwoven with dark magic, had been triggered by the storm's fury. One by one, the teenagers began to sense an unsettling presence creeping around them. Shadows danced along the walls, and the air grew icy cold. A voice, barely a whisper, echoed in their minds, each word dripping with malevolence. I see you. As fear gnawed at their hearts, the group searched for the source of the voice, their flashlights revealing flickering images of the doll, Serafina. Her porcelain visage was no longer frozen in stillness, her fingers twitched and her lips twisted into a sinister grin. Panic ensued and they attempted to flee the mansion, but the door slammed shut, sealing them inside with the malevolent force that had been unleashed. One by one, the group members faced their own personal horrors. The doll seemed to feel in their deepest fears, manipulating reality itself to torment them. One saw the walls drip with blood, another was pursued by shadowy figures, and yet another found themselves lost in a labyrinthine corridor that shifted and twisted with every step. As dawn approached, the storm's fury subsided and the ancient spell's power began to wane. The once united group had been shattered by terror and paranoia. Desperate and broken, they realized that the only way to break the curse was to confront the doll itself. Gathering their courage, they ventured back to the attic, where Serafina waited, perched on a dusty chest. Her glassy eyes glowed with malevolent energy and her delicate fingers flexed with anticipation. One by one, they recounted their harrowing experiences, defying the doll's attempts to plunge them into further fear. With a collective effort, they shattered the doll, breaking the curse that had held them captive within the mansion's walls. The atmosphere shifted, the malevolent presence faded, and a sense of relief washed over them. As the first rays of sunlight pierced through the attic's windows, the mansion seemed to sigh, releasing the grip of darkness that had clung to its very essence. Yet, as they made their way out of the mansion, a chilling wind whispered that the story of Serafina was far from over. Legends have a way of enduring, and the cursed doll's malevolent energy still lingers in the shadows, waiting for another opportune moment to rise again and torment the souls unlucky enough to cross its path. So, dear listener, beware of abandoned mansions and the allure of curiosity, for you may stumble upon a sinister secret that defies explanation and reason. The End of Story 1 Now for the second story. The Cursed Mirror in the heart of a quiet, unassuming apartment complex stood Apartment 303, a place that harbored a chilling secret. Its resident, Sarah, had always been an independent soul, drawn to the cozy space that held her solitude and creativity. Little did she know, the antique mirror that hung in her living room was a gateway to something sinister that dwelled just beyond her reflection. Sarah had come across the mirror at a vintage shop one foggy autumn afternoon. Its ornate frame and aged glass had an air of mystique that called out to her, whispering tales of hidden worlds. Mesmerized by its beauty, she purchased it and hung it on her wall, unaware of the malevolent presence that had awakened within. It started subtly, a fleeting movement in the corner of her eye, a barely audible whisper that seemed to come from within the mirror's depths. 
Sarah shrugged off these occurrences as figments of her imagination, the result of a tired mind playing tricks. But as the days turned into weeks, the incidents grew bolder. One night, as she stood in front of the mirror brushing her hair, a faint whisper transformed into a chilling voice that murmured her name. Her heart raced, but curiosity overpowered her fear. She leaned in, her breath fogging the glass, and whispered back, Who are you? The mirror's surface rippled like water, and a figure emerged from within, an eerie reflection of Sarah herself, but twisted and sinister. Its eyes gleamed with malevolence, its smile a grotesque mockery of her own. I am the shadow that has always followed you, it hissed, its voice a cacophony of hollow tones. Terror seized Sarah's heart, and she stumbled back, her pulse thundering in her ears. From that moment, the mirror's influence seeped into every corner of her life. Distorted whispers grew louder, tormenting her dreams and waking hours alike. The reflection taunted her with secrets only she knew, secrets she had never shared with a soul. It was as if the mirror had become a gateway to her innermost fears and insecurities. Desperation set in, and Sarah sought help from every corner, psychologists, priests, paranormal experts, all in vain. The sinister reflection's power only intensified, its malevolence spreading like a stain across her existence. Friends and family noticed her decline, the sparkle in her eyes replaced by a haunting emptiness. One moonlit night, driven to the brink of madness, Sarah devised a plan. Armed with a small hammer, she stood before the mirror, her own reflection staring back at her. With a trembling hand, she struck the glass, shattering it into a thousand shards. But instead of relief, a searing pain tore through her, and a chorus of agonized whispers filled the room. From the broken mirror, a vortex of darkness emerged, a swirling maelstrom that consumed everything in its path. Sarah was helpless as her apartment was engulfed by the abyss, the very fabric of reality unraveled by the malevolent force that had been unleashed. As the void swallowed her, the last thing she heard was the mocking laughter of her own reflection. And so, Apartment 303 became a place of unsolved mystery, a cautionary tale whispered among neighbors. The shattered mirror was never found, and Sarah's fate remained a dark enigma. Some say that on foggy autumn nights, the air around the apartment complex grows cold, and a distorted whisper echoes through the halls, a whisper that speaks of a shadowy figure glimpsed within shattered glass, a figure forever trapped between worlds, waiting for its next victim to come closer and peer into the depths of its malevolent gaze. If you enjoyed these two stories, please give a like and subscribe for more haunting stories. And remember you never know what might be standing behind you watching your every move.